Well, hello, God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden seeing you here today. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And it's that time of the week again where I get a chance to speak to you and, and let you hear from me and, and to invite you to, uh, to Bible study tonight and just, just love on you a little bit and, and experience your love. And I, I thank God for Jesus, my friends, and I thank God for every one of you. Now, I'm just going to jump into this because I have just a few things that I want to say. I am going to read last week. I received a wonderful, wonderful letter from a man of God, and he was questioning me concerning uh, some things that I had preached of late concerning suicide. And it was a very well written uh, email communication. I could tell that I was talking to a man of God and I was talking to someone who is an ally and not an enemy. And what really touched me in his letter, he said, thank you. And I am uh, for you, pastor, just so you know, God be with you. And as I read this email, I was deeply touched. And if you followed us on last week, last Thursday night's Bible study was dedicated by and large, if not uh, the entire message dealt with the issue of suicide. Not only did we have an opportunity to to respond to this tremendous man of God, he he sent his name. I'm not going to give that to you. And my, my, my friends, one of the keys to getting a response from us is I, I need to know who I'm talking to and how I can respond to you. And so he sent me uh, this email and uh, we responded and he sent another email uh, responding to our response. And I will read to you tonight in the service his very kind words and his response to our efforts to uh, respond to his uh, very sagacious uh, questions. Also, we got an opportunity. I've heard from believers uh, from quite a few places who thank me for the time that we spent in talking about this subject because it's almost like a contagion now. You know, uh, one person takes their own life and then uh, uh, we've seen it at certain universities. There's a rash of students uh, taking their own lives. Uh, and if we're not careful about the, uh, how we deal with this, uh, we will see it spread like a contagion, spread uh, just as we saw the uh, uh, coronavirus uh, spread and people began to copy one another. And God forbid, my friends. So I thank God for this letter. A man of God, I certainly thank God for you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And we're going to read this uh, to you tonight. And it shows that that uh, as believers, we are working together to fight the good fight of faith. Now, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Here we go. It's that time of the year again. Voila. Hallelujah. Look at this. Jesus pride. Yes, we're getting ready to go into the month of June. And here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, the month of June is Jesus Pride Month. And you know what that is. That's a take on uh, the, the, the silly season that we're about to go into in our country uh, known as Pride Month. And I call Pride Month the... Um, I call it the uh, the Philippians chapter three, verse 19 month, where the Bible says whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who mind earthly things. People are proud today. People are marching uh, to celebrate a lifestyle that they should, my friends, quite frankly, be ashamed of. And uh, we're not going to take down, as a matter of fact, uh, I was at Daystar uh, just on uh, uh, the first part of this week. And while uh, at Daystar, I was shown a clip of a drag queen uh, standing in what uh, appeared to be a church. 
and preaching and uh, saying that you're going to see more drag queen preachers and this uh, this this man dressed as a woman and 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 he and he and he says things like uh, we need it's time to be honest and we need to get rid of the BS he says well uh, how how much more uh, BS to use his own uh, uh, acronyms uh, uh, can there be than a man standing there dressed as a woman and acting like a woman? How, how you going to talk about being honest when there's nothing and truthful when there's nothing honest nor, nor truthful about your appearance whatsoever? You're pretending to be who and what you're not. And these are the very people who will tell us God loves people and we need to be uh, accepting and affirming of people who are being who they truly are when the whole LBGTQ uh, and all the rest of the letters is about people perverting who they truly are, going against who they truly are, dressing opposite themselves, their, their actual identity. All of these things, my friends. And uh, whereas in times past, even people who struggled with the, the sin of homosexuality and lesbianism and same-sex attractions and things like that, uh, they they struggled in, si in silence because they, they had respect for the general population. Now we've gone from struggling in and in silence to demanding a parade and demanding to be uh, affirmed and, and uh, the whole uh, United Church of Christ is in trouble. The, the United Methodist Church is in trouble because people are becoming what is called open and affirming, which is an official designation of congregations and other settings in the United Church of Christ, affirming the full inclusion of, you know, I don't call them gay, homosexual, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, non-binary persons in the church lives and ministry. And it is saying that these people are not only welcome in the church, but they're welcome to serve in all positions in the church. And, uh, and I tell you, uh, when a church is open and affirming to all kinds of wicked behavior, open and affirming to that which God says is evil, then I'm telling, I'm here to tell you that you're not a church at all. And it's time for us to stand on the word of God. We didn't write the Bible, but we are supposed to read the Bible. And if you're born again, you're going to live according to the Bible. And these people are trying to take the word of God and turn it up side down. But uh, there are people like you and like me who are standing on the word of God. Now, my friends, right quick, right quick. Listen, listen, I've said this to you before and uh, I, I, I receive word that some of you are asking questions again. You know, you see the, the Jesus pride flag behind me. As a matter of fact, there are two Jesus pride flags and, and then I have this in my hand and I got my big flag over there and I got uh, a flag hanging up in the sanctuary. All of these rainbows, all of these rainbows. Why? Because I do not believe that we should give the rainbow to the devil. I do not believe that we should surrender this powerful, powerful symbol of grace and mercy. The rainbow was, uh, I would put the rainbow in the same category as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord in the Old Testament and uh, similar, not in the same category, but similar to that of the cross where Jesus Christ died for us. And all of them, the Ark of the Covenant, the rainbow and all of these things, Point it to the cross of Christ. And uh, as a church, we should not, we should not give these things away. Um, just, just a thought to those pastors who are watching. Many of you have given in to the spirit of modernity and you don't have crosses uh, anything like that in your church at all. I think that all churches, every church should have a cross in the church the symbol of, of Christ dying for us on the cross and rising again, getting up on the third day. And, uh, and I pray that at least through the month of June, those who believe like we do get a rainbow flag and put it up and explain to your congregants what you're doing that you have to explain 
shows great failure on our part because God, not any community, not any man, not any government official, not any government, nor any country, but the God of the Bible made the rainbow. And that rainbow reminds God of the oath that God made and the promise that the Lord made that he would never again flood the earth with water for 40 days and 40 nights. He'll never cover the entire planet. And it reminds us of the promise that God made. So when you see that beautiful rainbow, that rainbow lets us know that we hadn't run out of mercy, we hadn't run out of grace, and no matter how long it's been raining, it's not going to rain 40 days and 40 nights. God's not going to cover the whole earth again. Now, Genesis chapter number 9, verse uh, 13, I do set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature uh, of all flesh and the waters shall no more. Look at what God says. No more become a flood to destroy all flesh and the bowl shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, this is a token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Now, how in the world can we take this powerful symbol of grace and mercy that God established with all flesh that's upon the earth and give it to a bunch of people and let them pervert the thing and turn it upside down and let them identify with it to the point that when you see the rainbow, you no longer think about Jesus Christ. You no longer think about the church, but you think about the LBGTQ and the rest of the letters community. The devil is a liar. Pastors, get your flags. Get your flags. You can order them. Go online. Get, get the seven colors. And the Lord is going to bless. Now, I tell you what. I tell you what. I tell you who would be doing it if they, if, if they, would, if, if, uh, they were on this um, uh, watching me today. The good old Bud Light guys. God bless. God bless the Bud Light Drinkers, may they never go back to Bud Light nor any other drink. But you know why I'm praising them. I'm praising them because uh, even though I do not drink beer of any kind, and if you're born again and love Jesus, you don't either. And we're not about to go and start doing that now. But you have to admit, you have to admit that you admire their moxie. You admire their uh, ability to stand for what they believe. And they made no bones about it. But light is down. There, there, there's some 15 billion lighter in their pockets. Uh, uh, beer going bad in the stores. The, <laughs> the store, the area where they've been kept in stores is full of beer. People, <laughs> people buying beer, uh, buying their competitors. Um, I'm hoping that they're just uh, they stop drinking altogether. But they they showed Bud that they shouldn't have got Dylan Mulvaney nor any other man pretend, pretending to be a woman to advertise that product. Now I don't know what in the world happened to uh, Target, uh, but Target is beginning to pull some of its. Uh, uh, pride uh, merchandise that it had at the front of the uh, of the, of the uh, store. They're putting it to the back of the store. Target teaming up with Satanists to uh, uh, make children uh, uh, little onesies and different things for kids. The de what what in the world? Now let me say this, and I'm 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 I'm, I'm about to sign off. Believers, we can control all of these things every bit of this, if we just would, would, would put something ahead 
of convenience. Oh, I'm going to continue to shop at Target because it's convenient for me. Oh, I'm going to continue to do this because it's convenient for me. Listen, your God cannot be convenient. It was not convenient for Jesus to go to the cross. The Bible teaches that he endured the cross, despising the shame. He didn't love it. He didn't enjoy it. He endured it, despising the shame. And now he's at the right hand of the Father on high. Some things we've just got to endure. There comes a time when the believer has to make a stand. And you know what corporations understand? They don't, they, they, they may not understand prayers. They may not understand speeches. They, they don't understand words, but they understand uh, you going somewhere else with your pocketbook. They understand you're not, uh, you're not patronizing their business. Uh, a man was walking through a, a, a mall one day and he had a shirt on that just simply said, Jesus saves. And the mall people put him out the mall because his shirt was offending people. Well, what about this? We're offended to have that kind of paraphernalia at the front of the store. It shouldn't be in the store. And who could ever think to come up with a diabolical, homosexual, transsexual uh, onesie for a, a, a baby to, 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 to talk away his little male genitalia. Now, these people are demon possessed. You are seeing demonic activity alive and well in society. And they think that they have such a upper hand that they can be demonic like this and all we will do is just take it, a grin and bear it and go on. I pray to God that everybody who is sanctified, everybody who loves Jesus Christ, everybody who has an inkling of what the Bible says on these things, I pray that any business uh, who begins to do these things, that we will take our business elsewhere. I think it's Norfleet. They've got a commercial out. They're just using a straight up uh, homosexual, saying I'm homosexual, inviting the people uh, a, a drag queen uh, uh, or a trans a trans man uh, 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 inviting the people to come out come out into the woods and all that kind of stuff. Well, you're mighty bold, but listen, you're not the only one who makes coats and winter clothes and and and, and caps and, and and boots and whatever. And if you were, we made it before you became a business, and we'll make it after you're no longer one. I pray that the saints, when people come out and they show you that your values mean nothing, that what you believe means nothing, that they have, they have taken sides. They have taken sides. They've gone from being a business and a corporation that's designed to serve everyone, and they have taken a calculated risk that you will soon get over it that you will not inconvenience yourself, that, oh, you'll get a few Christians who will, who will bark for just a moment or two, and then they'll, they'll tuck the tail between the legs and sheepishly, and like a little scary dog, come on back into the store and patronize. I pray, my friends, that, that they have judged us incorrectly, that we've had it, that if you're going to take sides uh, we, 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 want, we want to patronize your business. We want people to work. We want, we want to spend our money with you. But we want to be valued customers. We want to be respected. And see, we live in a day now where it's all right to disrespect. It's, it's wrong to disrespect everyone except Christians. And I'm telling you right now, uh, you have the ability to do something about it. <clears throat> we can pray and then go spend your money elsewhere. Because what these people respond to is the dollar. Now, I'm out of time. I've gone a little long, but I, I needed to mention uh, these things to you today uh, because we're right on the cusp 
of Jesus Pride Month, the month de- declared by Bishop Patrick L. Wood Sr. and other like-minded believers that we are not going to give an inch. We're not going to be quiet and stand off in the shadows and let uh, this c- uh, community of, a, of abominable behavior have the month of June. The God of the Bible made every month. He made every day. He's made every hour. And we belong to him. And I pray pastors out there who are watching, hey, get stirred up. Lead your congregation. If they're not there yet, bring them to where they should be. Teach them the word of God. Teach them where they can comprehend with all saints what is the height and the breadth, depth and the length and the breadth of Christ Jesus. Teach them these issues that are going on in the world. Teach them what to look for. In Florida, uh, Pride Fest, Pride Fest, they wanted to have uh, a homosexual parade, parading and doing all kinds of lewd sex acts Exposed genitalia in public for children to see. The state of Florida passed a law signed by Governor DeSantos saying you can have your parade, but you, you're not going to be able to just do that. Now, most reasonable people wouldn't want to do that anyway. Most reasonable people wouldn't want children exposed to that kind of a thing anyway. But you know what they chose to do in Florida? They chose not to have the parade at all. So I guess if they said we can't, if we can't have our sex in the open air and if we can't expose our behinds and if we can't let everybody see us naked, licking and lapping on top of each other, we won't have a parade at all. Well, I pray that you never change your mind and that you don't ever have another parade because we don't. That's the last thing we need. Now, my friends, I love you. And here's the thing about everything I just said. I'm right. And you know that I am. And if you're born again and sanctified, you feel the same way about these things. Unless some smart person would say, oh, uh, do we have to be uh, born again and sanctified, Brother Wooden, to agree with you on, uh, and, and, and uh, to agree that the, is, is it the proof that we're born again and sanctified is that we agree with you? No, but it is that you agree with me on this because everybody who's sanctified and who have read the Bible knows that I'm telling the truth. So I want to invite you because I've, Listen, I'm going to respond tonight to a lie that a drag queen told on the book of Amos that I saw when I was out at Daystar, and I didn't even know when God led me to Amos that this was out there, and uh, I'm going to be talking about it tonight and other things. Our plate is loaded. We're loaded for bear. And I want you to join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. (laughs) Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Bible study. We are going to study the Word of God together. Now, you make it a fantastic afternoon. I apologize for going so long, but I'm fired up, and I pray that you are Also, we'll see you tonight. If you can't be here, join us on this medium and we're going to walk in the scriptures. God bless.